Blessings. We are dealing with the secret place. And we want today to minister to you on how to get into the secret place, but you need to also know how to understand what the secret place is. You can't run to some place if you don't know the destination or the place by which you're running to. And so we want to look at Psalms 91 and 1, famous scripture where the word of God says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Before you get to the secret place, you have to understand that this verse starts to speak to he who dwells. So dwell in the Hebrew speaks to a place where you're actually abiding, you're actually sitting, you remain, and you also make it an inhabited place. It's your habitation. It's where you live. Any place that you live, you should have an address. So that address is where you can be found. So we know if you have an address in the spirit realm, we know where you're located. We can send stuff to you because that's where this place of living and dwelling is manifested. So he who dwells in the secret place. Now, the phrase secret place speaks to in the Hebrew that it is the place of the holies of holies. This is where that specific place, the Ark of the Covenant is there where God says, I'll meet you over the mercy seat. But it is a secret because of this one notion. Only the high priest can actually go in once a year with the Hebrew culture into this holy place. And so it becomes a secret. The people on the outside, they wait for the high priest to go in, sprinkle the blood over the mercy seat so sins can be forgiven. But those that are on the outside, they never get the ability to go into that secret place because it's only set for the high priest. Well, I want to tell you today that God is saying that that was Old Testament. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ, who is the high priest. This high priest has died for you, and now it gives you the entranceway to now come behind the veil. When Jesus was crucified, the veil was torn from the top to the bottom, and it gave an entranceway or a pathway where now you didn't have to wait once a year for sin to be forgiven. You now have the ability to come into the secret place yourself. Also, why is it a secret? If it's a place where God is, Satan doesn't reside there. So when you come in to have this habitation or this location where your address is and God is there, this place is so special that God wants you to dwell there. He wants you to live there. He wants you to come and actually set up residence in this secret place where the enemy can't come in. So imagine it like this. If you went in and you only had one weapon, for we know the weapons of our war are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. If I only had one weapon, when I go into this secret place, God can give me new weapons because the enemy will not know what he's giving me. In this secret place, God will bestow things to you. He'll reveal things to you. And he'll also do this, one key thing. He'll set up a place where you can commune with him, where you can have this intimacy with him, where he can minister to you, you minister to him, he heal you, He'll deliver you, set you free, give you understanding, and most of all, he'll give you the power of God so you can do the mission or the mandate that he has for your life. So the secret place is such a powerful place for us to reside. We need to dwell there. We need to get there. We need to push to be in the presence of God in that place called the secret place. And he will be there. Who? The Most High. What does that speak to in the Hebrew? It speaks to the Most High being the Great Supreme One. So there is nobody that can go into this place that's on His level. So when He's saying, I need you to come into the secret place of the Most High, God, it's something He owns. Satan does not own it. God does. This secret place, He's wooing you in. He's commanding you to come in. He's speaking you to come into this place with him so you too can have this communion, this intimacy, so you can have this relationship. And then the word of God continues to go on and it says, so shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So in this secret place, there's a shadow of the Almighty. It's the covering. It's the presence of God where he begins to minister to you. In the book of Malachi, they say it like this. There's healing in his wings. If you will see a bird or a mother 
that has uh, chicks or other bird or baby birds, the mother has wings that cover. So what the secret place speaks to men and women of God is that in God's presence, there's a covering. But Malachi says it like this too. Those wings also have healing in them. Boy, I tell you, we need healing. Many of us need such a healing mentally, physically, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. Have you heard people say, I'm church hurt? Well, you know what? You've got to get under the right bird or the right almighty, the shadow of the almighty so you can be healed. You need to get a place where God can cover you. And in his covering, you can find a place where the healing is in the wings of God. You can't find it in any other place. No other place healing do I know but in the name of Jesus Christ. And so it becomes what? A shadow. The shadow of the Almighty. If it's a shadow, that means the light of God is there and it's protecting me. It's keeping me from the rays of the enemy. It's keeping me from the fire that wants to destroy. It's keeping me because I'm under this shadow of the Almighty. I am protected. Man, I tell you, today we need to be protected. Today we need to know that we run to God, we run to this secret place so God can keep us and sustain us and cause us to be better because we go in one way. But when we come out of this secret place, we're healed, we're delivered, we're set free. Today we want that to be for you. How do you get it? You've got to seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Stop running after the things that are the add-on, but get the first thing, which is God. If you can run to God, seek God, go after him, give him everything, spirit, mind, body, and your life, what you will find is that that secret place will become a place of peace. What is that? The peace to surpass all understanding. I want to tell you like this, God in his infinite wisdom, he created man on the sixth day, but on the seventh day, he rested. So the God that we serve is living in the seventh day anointing of the rest, but we are what we're doing fighting in our sixth day because we're still in our flesh. We've got to, men and women of God, run to the secret place. That's where God is. It's on the seventh day. He's resting. And so if we can battle our sixth day, Get out of our sixth day, get into our seventh day where he is, where we have peace. These are the things that are going to cause us to be able to be sustained. We'll be able to stand against the enemy. These will be the things where we can prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And in that secret place, we can say it to people all around the world this way. We know that all things in God work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose, because the secret place is where I live. Today, men and women of God, I want you to have a mindset I need to get to this secret place. It's not just for the high priest anymore. The veil has been torn. I love how God did it. He tore it from the top to the bottom because we're not big enough. Your problems are not big enough. If you could tear it, it would only be from bottom up. But the God that we serve is so infinite, so powerful, so great that he tears from the top down because he's in control of everything. Do not think that Satan is in control of all things. He has a place, but in the secret place, we can abide, we can live, we can win. And today, men and women of God, we're going to win because we're going to live there. Now, how do we live there? We need to understand in our seeking to get to this secret place where God lives, we need to what? Crucify our flesh. We need to die to ourselves. We say it like this at Kingdom Word. Die, 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 and then die again. Why? Because if your flesh is not crucified, you will allow your flesh to speak. Have you ever had your flesh speak in a situation when you know, ah, if I'm hearing something different and I know it is God telling me not to do X, Y, and Z. And what do we do? Our flesh tells us, well, just do what you want to do. That's the problem. We're not living in the secret place. In the secret place, we'd be able to hear God through his word, 
that his word will be hid in our heart that we might not sin against him. So ultimately, the very things that are the word of God that's in us, it teaches us, it shows us, it does what? Leads us and guides us what? Into all truth. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us on how not to act in our flesh. We've got to crucify our flesh daily, and this is part of how we should have this lifestyle. If I'm living in the secret place, remember, dwelling, abiding, that is going to be the thing that's going to cause us to be able to hear God and understand what to do and what not to do. We need to be led by the Spirit. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. We need to make sure that we're a son or a daughter because if we're a son and a daughter, we can say, God, I live at your house. It's the secret place, the presence of God. He lets us come in because he knows us because our DNA speaks to us being attached to the king. You're not going to have somebody live in your house that you don't know, do you? Now nah, you won't. But he wants to make sure he knows you so he can say, hey, come on in. Your family, you got the same DNA. I know you. And today, men and women of God, he wants to know you. In what? The fullness of his suffering. Through the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because we believe by faith what he's done. All power and authority is in his hands. Because after he rose on that third day. We know that through him we can live, move, and have our being. Today, we're going to live in the lifestyle just like our big brother Jesus Christ. And today, as we live like him. He lives on the inside of us. We've got to proclaim the location where we abide. That's the secret place. There's healing in his wings. There's a place where you can have the peace of God that surpass all understanding. And today, in that peaceful place, you crucify your flesh, you learn how to live in the secret place, and most of all, if you can get to that place, healing is afforded to you, direction is afforded to you, but most of all, I want to say it like this. The love of God is in that place. If you have never experienced the love of God, the peace of God, that love is in the secret place. If you'll run to that place, hands lifted up, and have heart going after God, I'll tell you today, you'll experience the love that surpass all understanding. That love is going to cover a multitude of sin. I don't care what you've done. The love of God can cover it. And today... That love is in the secret place. Hey, let's pray today as we begin to conclude that the secret place is where you run to. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for every listener. We pray, God, that even as this word goes out over the airwaves worldwide about the secret place, we pray today, God, draw us by your spirit into that place, God, where we can get fresh weapons, we can get this intimacy, we can get this healing, we can get this deliverance, God, because really we're all messed up, God, and we need a Savior that can heal us and deliver us and give us a place where we can be new. Old things passed away, all things become new. Today, God, do it. Cause us to live in the secret place, because if we can live in that secret place, we know without a shot of a doubt that we can be healed, delivered, and that the best is yet to come for us because we live with God.